seated. Please close the back door. Thank you. Uh, we have talked about the feast in the Old Testament. And these feasts are the feasts of God. A God would take roster of those who attend this um, uh, a feast and rest. And uh, to remember uh, the death of the Lord Jesus on the cross. And the blood of Christ uh, becomes uh, the fountain of cleansing. And it's able uh, to cleanse away sins. And this is the origin of the um, uh, a, a feast of unleavened bread. So, the yeast of the Passover feast represents sin. So Paul says that when we keep the, the Passover, uh, we do not use the old yeast. Uh, we need to remove the old yeast. In the Old Testament, it never specifically mentions uh, the, the meaning of uh, the yeast. But in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus uh, gave a meaning to the yeast. Please turn to Mark. Um, chapter 8, verse 15. Mark chapter 8 verse 15 耶稣嘱咐他们说你们要谨慎防备法利赛人的笑和西律的笑 15 Then he charged them saying Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod 这个是一个旧笑 so this refers to the old leaven. Um, the Pharisees are very into uh, the rules and regulations of the law. And they are very strict. But they do things according or based on their own righteousness. They do not rely on the grace of the Lord Jesus. So they do not, uh, uh, they do not uh, uh, recognize uh, Jesus. And the Pharisees has a lot of uh, requirements. So uh, most people, to fulfill this requirement, they, they do uh, things uh, superficially. Because they can't uh, do it. Uh, but if they don't do it, then it's not uh, okay. Uh, so what can they do? Uh, so they had no choice but to just do it superficially. So the Lord Jesus uh, often rebuked the Pharisees as hypocrites. Uh, so this is their leaven. Uh, so likewise today at church, uh, what we ourselves cannot uh, uh, perform, we should not require that of others. For example, we say that one day we must read 20 chapters of the Bible. So let's see how many of us here can do that. So if you make that announcement that it's something that can become a superficial. Or we can announce that uh, everyone let's wake up at 4 a.m. and be at church to pray. And um, how many of us can do that? 
so if you make that announcement, it's as good as not making it. So, uh, um, uh, that's making a requirement that um, no one can keep. And it may turn into something uh, routine. Uh, but um, the, 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 the method of the Lord Jesus is very easy. So as long as, you, as long as you believe him, he will receive those who, those who are weary and heavy laden and coming to him. So as well for those who are uh, 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 weary and heavy laden. And as to those who are thirsty. So that they all can enjoy the free grace of Jesus. And this only requires a faith. And uh, to rely merely on the grace of the Lord Jesus. And that is all it takes. So uh, faith is something uh, relaxing and easy. Uh, next is the leaven of Herod. Herod is a politician. So he uh, receives benefits through the currency. Uh, he receives uh, benefits from his political power. So he lives behind the shadow of uh, the politics. So um, Herod does not need to rely on the Lord Jesus. He merely relies on the political power. Uh, and the Lord Jesus uh, uh, calls Herod um, as a fox. So foxes are cunning and will always try a loophole. Look for loopholes. Uh, but as Christians, we have to be honest in our dealings. And in the book of Matthew, records uh, records another leaven, which is the leaven of the Sadducees. Sadducees,那是不信鬼神，不信复活。so the Sadducees do not believe in the spirit, neither they be, do they believe in the resurrection. Uh, because to them, this is beyond a rationale. So what is uh, beyond a human rationale, then they cannot accept. So, and that is the leaven of the Sadducees. And the Lord Jesus mentioned about three types of leaven. And Paul also mentioned about this leaven. Uh, please turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We have read this in the morning. Let's read it again. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 7. Therefore, purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So here Paul especially mentioned uh, the Passover. So uh, during the Passover, uh, there should not have any uh, uh, leaven. And what is this leaven? And according to Paul, this leaven is malice and wickedness. Uh, 
um, the Pharisees because they uh, were self-righteous, so they looked down on others. And this is a form of uh, wickedness. Uh, so in order to do something superficial, they so they uh, walk on the wrong path and their uh, 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 behavior would go astray. So this is what it means to remove the leaven. And the feast of the first fruits refers to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Uh, next is on the Pentecost. And it's during the Pentecost that the Holy Spirit first uh, uh, descend upon the world. And it will uh, uh, bestow power to everyone so that we can be renewed, so that we can have a new mind and a new uh, perspective of the world and a new uh, set, uh, 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 a set of values. Now let's turn to Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23, verse 24. Leviticus 23, verse 24. Leviticus 23, verse Twenty-four. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, "In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation." Ah, so during the spiritual convocation is the time for us uh, to keep the feast of the unleavened bread. Um, the feast of the first fruits and the Passover. And now is the feast of trumpets. And these uh, feast of trumpets is a memorial. Uh, so it's our way of remembering someone. So a memorial is to use our hearts uh, to prove uh, the, 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 the genuineness of a, a certain thing. So the, uh, the focus here is to uh, experience uh, the, how genuine uh, this thing is. And it's not only a memorial in, in the mind. Uh, just like we uh, uh, memorialize uh, the life of a, a hero. Uh, but this is different. We need to use our hearts to test the genuineness of this uh, matter. So the emphasis is on experience. And so what do we uh, remember or memorialize? Uh, so using our common term today, uh, which is first to remember the sufferings of the Lord whilst he was still on earth. Uh, we know that when the Lord was on earth, he had a hard life of preaching the gospel. He is the God of heaven, but he came to earth in the form of a human. And so he is a true human. He, had, he is a human with flesh and blood. So he was looked down by others. He was looked down by his siblings. Perhaps his uh, master also looked down on him. He may also be looked down upon by the uh, uh, upper class of the society. For example, the Pharisees. 
he was he also even betrayed. He was betrayed by his own student. So you could see how sad he must be. But the Lord uh, forbear, forbear all this. Um, the Lord said that uh, how long should I uh, uh, tolerate you? Sometimes when we watch the Kung Fu movies and we see the great heroes with great power, and when someone wants to bully him, then the, the hero will just persevere. Uh, and, but all he wanted was actually to just um, use his fist and attack. But because he was a great hero, so he had to persevere. So he had the strength and he was able to control his temper. So all the more, our Lord Jesus is like this. He is the God of heaven. So there's people who looked down at him and mocked him. He could be like Prophet Elisha in the Old Testament when people teased him, saying that he's a bald-headed guy. So suddenly, the bears came and, 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 um, and, 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 and mauled the children or the youngsters to death. So the Lord Jesus can do the same. But he did not. He persevered and tolerated their ridicule. So this is something that we ought to remember. This is because when others look down upon us, we may not be able to take it and feel so unfairly treated. Uh, because we all have our own uh, uh, self uh, we have our own self-esteem. So when we're looked down upon, we may feel uh, very uh, troubled and sad. And what more if we are betrayed by our own beloved student? So all the more, we will be saddened. But the Lord merely quietly accepted the ridicule and the betrayal of others. So this is the sufferings or the passion of the Jesus Christ. So we should remember this. And Paul said that we should also remember the death of the Lord. And he not only suffered for us, he even had to die for us on the cross. And we also need to remember the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Uh, because dying for us is not enough. Because if he did not resurrect, then his uh, death would not be valid. Uh, because uh, there are also many others who would die for other human. Then if the Lord uh, had not resurrected, uh, then our uh, faith or religion will be in vain. So Paul encouraged Timothy to remember the descendant of David, which is the Lord Jesus, remember his resurrection. So to be resurrected is indeed a great deal. So uh, a resurrection of the Lord uh, is indeed uh, 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 beyond a human uh, comprehension. And it is God's uh, great power and strength that was able to resurrect the Lord. So this event is to tell us that uh, the Lord was even able to win over death. Uh, to humankind, death is the end of everything. It's hopeless. Many people thought that life was hopeless, so the, the only way they could go was uh, suicide. 
But we as Christians were different. Uh, because for us, the Lord Jesus has resurrected from uh, death. And this gives us hope. Uh, let's turn to Romans. Romans chapter 14. Um, Romans uh, 15. Romans 15, verse 13. Uh, we know that the Lord is faithful and that he will bring us to the end of the world. Okay, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Next, let's read Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Verse 11. 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So the power of God that works in the Lord Jesus can likewise work the same in us. And this, will, this is our hope. So whether matters great or small, we all have hope. So in the, in the uh, word bank of a Christian, uh, there is no such word as despair. As long as we believe God of hope, the God of hope will fill us with all joy and peace. Uh, so we not only need to remember the death of the, of the Lord Jesus, but we also need to remember his resurrection. Now let's turn back to Leviticus chapter 23. Uh, Leviticus 23. Now, uh, Leviticus 23, one is one meaning is to call everyone together. So uh, prior to the convocation, we have also already blown blew the trumpet announcing that today we will have the spiritual convocation. So the council members have stood here and blew the trumpets. And then everybody heard the call and they came. So we came because of the call of the trumpets. And why do we come here? We come here to listen to the words of a warning. Uh, let's turn to the book of Ezekiel, um, chapter 33. Ezekiel 33, verse 1. 33, verse 1. Three. So here says uh, to blow the trumpet and warn the people. So today, why do we blow the trumpet? It is to warn the people. So to warn our members. And, which, and to warn our friends. So we uh, deliver a sermon. It serves as a warning. 
So regardless of the worker, when they come up here to the pulpit, the message they give serves as a warning. Uh, because as humans, we all tend to have weaknesses. It's very easy for us to depart away from God. Just like in the Old Testament, it's very easy for them to worship idols. So God sent many prophets to warn them. Likewise, today in the society, we face many challenges and temptations. So God sent many prophets to warn so God has sent many workers to warn us. Especially to the young truth seekers who wish to be baptized. Because the society today is very complicated. Everyone is very uh, uh, lax or very um, liberal in their moral values. Uh, today, the society emphasizes on a freedom. So some people say, as long as I like it, why can't I do it? And because I, I'm not even harming anyone. So so the moral values of the society is very different from ours. So sometimes it's very easy for our young people to be influenced. For some young people, it's good for them to come to church. Sometimes I would uh, share with the parents and tell them that your children are very uh, uh, well behaved in the church. Uh, but the parents would respond saying, oh, you don't know. At home, they're different. Because in the church, the pollution level is zero. Uh, because in church, the only things you do is to pray and listen to the word or uh, to eat. So it's very simple. So it's a place that has a zero level of uh, pollution. But at home, it's different. Uh, in the past, the computer screen is very huge. Uh, so it's impossible for the, the young to put the mo computer monitor under their blankets. But now the iPads and the iPods are small enough that they can, uh, what, whatever they watch under the, the sheets, the parents would not know. Uh, because the society today is very complicated. So all the more, we need workers who can uh, blow uh, the trumpet and serve uh, as warnings. Uh, perhaps sometimes the young uh, may not like to hear them. Uh, why do you nag so much? Uh, there is a young preacher. He wanted to share the problems in the current society. But the young people refused to listen. Uh, they said, this is our privacy. Uh, you don't have to talk about it. But from the standpoint of our faith, um, the church has to take up the responsibility as the watchman. So the period of the spiritual convocation is the time when we blow the trumpets. And we uh, do the task of uh, sending out warnings. Uh, because the information out there today is there's just too many of them. Uh, perhaps we can uh, just do a, a small survey and find out how, how much time do we all spend on in front of um, a, a device, media device. Uh, so we need to do serve uh, uh, the work of warning. Uh, because we may be influenced by the, uh, 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 the values of the society. 
So uh, during the spiritual convocation, it's uh, the time that we blow the trumpets uh, to warn the people. Uh, now let's turn back to uh, Leviticus 23. Uh, 23 verse 24. Here says a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. So on this day, what exactly do we do? In the Old Testament times, they would read the scriptures. For example, Ezra would read the scriptures to the people. And on the, se on the first day of the seventh month, he would read the scriptures to the people as a memorial. So listening to sermons is very important. Uh, so uh, earlier preacher Ho has said that uh, listening to sermons is a two-way thing. Uh, so the person blowing the trumpet will blow all he can. Uh, uh, but the listeners should not feel that it's very deafening, but they should um, uh, pay attention. Uh, because this is a holy convocation. It is the feast of God. So we should humbly uh, receive it and to act it out. And then we can receive the blessings of God. Then we can experience uh, uh, the rest in our soul. So now we will pray. Uh, let's blow the trumpets and uh, uh, send the warning. Now, if you blow the trumpet, it can still be heard. But, but if we come uh, to be like the final trumpet in the book of Revelation, then uh, there's no more chance. So uh, we should seize the uh, opportunity uh, that we can still uh, repent. And let us ask the Lord uh, to help us uh, to repent. Let's all pray 